people, welcome back to another episode of Food Clinic, your number one daily KC hub where I get to show you how to make sumptuous meals for yourself, your family members and your loved ones. I'm your host on today's episode and my name is B. Today I'll be teaching you how to make jello fries. Of course, it's a festive season. Yuletide is around the corner and I'm very sure you'll be looking for some amazing recipes for visitors that will be coming over to your house, relatives, family, friends. Of course, your cooking skills and game has to be top notch. So stick with me as I show you how to make this yummy jello fries for your family this festive season. Come along with me guys. <laughs> So in this Yuletide season, of course, we'll be having family, distant relatives, we'll be having friends coming around. And what's the best way for we women to bond than bonding in the kitchen? So I'll be trying to be sharing some tips that's gonna help you bond with your sister-in-law, your sisters, people, family members you haven't seen in a very long time. You can ask them to come help you. Let me say, for instance, I personally, I don't like having people in the kitchen when I'm cooking. Like, I don't like someone to help me. I feel like too many hands spoil the broth. But trust me, there's so many ways you can have people in the kitchen helping you out without feeling overwhelmed and without them, you know, having to make any unnecessary input into the meal you're cooking. You can have them wash your ingredients you're using to cook. For example, my chicken over here has already been properly and thoroughly washed. Trust me, you're going to have kids around, of course. Your siblings are going to be coming around with their kids, your parents, the elderly, you know, they're going to be around. So there are so many age groups that will be around that you have to be very careful what you're cooking in the kitchen. Trust me, you need to prep your ingredients first. So trust me, everything that needs to be washed needs to be washed with ultimate care. You don't want people that come to your house to eat, to go home with food poisoning or to have one issue or the other. So trust me, we're going to start from washing our chicken properly. Please use salt and vinegar. If you don't have vinegar, it's okay to use salt and you can wash as many times as possible until you feel that your, your chicken is Really properly cleanse so wash your chicken properly if you're gonna be using fresh tomatoes pepper um, atarado all the rest of the scotch bonnet and the rest of it please ensure it's properly washed you can ask your cousin sister to step into the kitchen and do the washing for you you can ask your sister-in-law to help you with the meat prepping while you just supervise them while they're doing that you can ask someone to help you cut the plantains in case you want to be adding plantain to your jello fries this season that's an amazing accessory for your food you can ask your um, any of your relatives to step into the kitchen and help you do that part if you're making salad you can offer your mom anybody just this is just the ways why you can bond in the kitchen with your relatives over this festive period trust me i'm always so excited about christmas because i get to see all my cousins my distant relatives i haven't seen in a very long time and it's such an amazing period so if you're cooking please ensure you cook with so much love ensure you bring the people around you because christmas is just this time to celebrate family togetherness and love <music> Welcome back guys and now let's go down to the ingredients we're going to be using to make our jello fries. Over here I have my washed chicken, over here I have my rice, the rice I'll be using to make this jello fries. It's right here, I haven't washed it, I haven't parboiled it, so it's just sitting pretty over here. I have my um, spice range, I have my jello spice, I have my rosemary, I have thyme and I have curry. Over here I have my tin tomatoes I'll be using for this meal. I have my scotch bonnet already chopped, finely chopped for me, waiting for me to use. I have my seasoning cube right over here and over here I have my chopped onion and salmon chopped onion I can see right in here so guys these are the ingredients we're going to be using to make this jello fries and some other ingredients that is not right here I told you guys that we're making this jello fries with a twist right so don't go anywhere because that ingredient is not here I didn't show you it's a secret coming up so don't go anywhere so you don't miss that ingredient okay that's the chief ingredient is gonna make the difference in this jello fries come along with me guys <laughs> So right now we're about to start cooking, but first of all, like I said, hygiene first. I'm gonna go over there, wash my hands. I'm going to wash my hands and then we start from our rice. So let me just quickly give this pot a quick rinse. So, our chief ingredient, I told you guys earlier, I haven't washed it or parboiled it yet. So that's the next step I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be washing 
and for boiling I don't know how some of you do your own sha, but this is the way I use my own method. So I always wash my rice. The li I look at my liquid. That's the ch um, checking point for me, okay? So I'm always wash my rice. At first, when you start to wash the rice, the water looks cloudy. So I wash my rice to the point whereby the water is now transparent, like it's as good as clean, like I can see through the rice. So that's how I always wash my rice. That's when I know, okay, that's enough for the washing. So I keep washing until there's no sign of cloudiness then i can only see clear water one of the reasons i fell in love with jello fries was the way my grandma and my aunts back then used to make it like there's something about this firewood jello fries but of course now we can't have the how can you be making um fire we're using firewood to cook inside the kitchen so we don't have that luxury or i don't know if you would explain, describe it as luxury but when, when it comes to the taste trust me that's premium jello fries that burnt firewood taste it's that's the game changing effect for me let's light up our gas okay so we put this on fire so while it's cooking the second key ingredient we're going to be using is our chicken our meat i told you it's still fresh I haven't cooked it at all so I'm going to go over there to give it a final wash as it's been sitting pretty and I left it exposed I'm going to still give it a final wash and then we can start prepping our meat so I told you guys already I've already washed this meat thoroughly so if you're in, in the kitchen please use vinegar and salt if you don't have vinegar please you can use just salt it's fine after all, before the discovery of vinegar salt was doing an amazing good job so please use just salt and we are fine so when i'm prepping my chicken of course i there's one thing i don't do i don't put water in my chicken immediately i just um, season it allow it cook a bit then allow it to release its own juice first then when I say that release its own juice and I add a bit of water to let it cook so I can use that as my chicken stock for my food. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but that's how I roll. So I'm going to go over here, quickly get some seasoning cube for my chicken. Put that in here. Just a bit of salt, nothing too serious or dramatic because, um, yeah. Then I'll also be going in with some spices. To give my chicken the flavor I want it to have. It's not just the rice. Everything, the, um, you, your cooking process already starts now. So the spicing of the meat also goes a long way. Because that's also the stock from your chicken is what you're going to be using for the rice. So trust me, right now you've already started cooking proper, proper, proper. Everything you're using right now is what's going to affect your jollof rice. So the success story of a jollof rice has already started. All right. So if you're messing around in this part, trust me sister. You're about to embarrass yourself in front of your whole family members trust me and that's not even a good thing so having done that part i'll be putting my chicken on fire to start cooking okay so i'm also going to go in with our onion into our meat to give it the flavor okay guys so i just saw this pepper and one thing came into my mind you know that there's some people that when you're going to the village, i don't know if you're traveling to the village this period or your husband or you guys are like the um people come to your house to visit a lot right and you're sure there's always your your husband's sister one dramatic in-law that's always coming to give you one hell of like always trying to make your holiday experience very difficult and you're like you know what this one this is that will show you pepe i've yet to advise you against that please this is the season of love and you know just spread love trust me just kill them with kindness when she comes without her drama she wants to come and show you or anything just this kind of thing and let me just explain to you guys you know the kind of season they will come and they will say mm, don't know that his wife that one blah, 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 blah. see ignore them treat them nice ask them for their opinion man what do you think we should do? see play the fool ask the fool trust me it goes a very long way when someone comes and hey hey and then you're like sorry thank you what do you want are you okay are you fine do you like the room again like see when you treat them you talk to them in a very soft tone you talk to them in a very calm way trust me 
all those their razz matters, everything they've already planned for you when they are coming, it's gonna disappear into the thin air. I know when you treat them with kindness, that's when they're gonna be like, oh, that one, she's very soft, she's very easy going, anything goes, and I want to come and oppress you. See, when you have those kind of extremely difficult people, you need to know when to be calm, you need to know when to be nice, and you need to know when to put your foot down so that they don't push you around, they don't play you around. But in doing so, I'm going to advise you because they are family. You know, even if they are not like blood related, they are still family by marriage. So all you have to do when putting your foot down, still let them know that, okay, you cross the line, you cross the boundary. I'm not going to take that from you. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be rude or outrightly, um, you know, arrogant or anything, but I'm just trying to tell you, I'm going to keep you in line and I'm going to keep you in check. But that doesn't mean that I'm nice and kind to you. That doesn't mean that you come around here and try to give me one hell of a vibe, okay? I know some people, if you do, even though you try to go her head, you treat them with kindness, try to be nice to them, they'll still come and be giving you, they'll still look for something bad to say. Shall do the best you can. But for those ones that are extremely difficult, please don't be a pushover or push around. Know when to put your feet down, know when to tell them, no, I've had enough of that. I'm not going to take that from you. I know I'm. you're welcome to my house. I'm going to treat you nice, but please learn not to cross some boundaries. Learn not to cross certain parameters, okay? So having said that, let's go quickly check on our food. Okay, this is almost getting ready. And this right here is already cooking nicely, yeah. Mm, the aroma is already changing this kitchen ambience. Okay, so let me quickly check our uh, meat. If you guys realized earlier, sorry, I'm among the gang that when I'm putting spices to my food, I just allow the spirit of my ancestors to tell me when it's okay. I'm not, I don't know it's a very bad habit, honestly, but I don't know if it's a bad habit or I, do, I don't know. But to me, I think it's not really that nice because when I'm cooking, I rarely taste the food. I don't know how to explain. That didn't sound right, but I don't know. I rarely taste my food. Okay, so I think I need to add a bit of water. The chicken has already released this flay, um, its own spice. So let me just add water for, to use. Let the chicken use this to cook. So earlier, when I explained that, I didn't explain very well to you guys. When you let the chicken release its own flavor, right? It also allows your spices, everything to, to get into the chicken. As the chicken is releasing its own juice, watch your the spices too you put in it is entering into the chicken. So just allow that for like five, I think five, three to four minutes is okay. So once it has done that part, then you quickly add water that is going to you're going to use to let the um, chicken cook, and also you're going to use that water now as your meat stock for your food. Trust me, it's very important. I don't know how people say um you maybe the water isn't to do your meat it dries up or something that's totally wrong because there's something about using the meat stock from the protein choice of yours for that desired food there's something about using the stock into the main meal it's there's something it does to the food trust me okay this is okay this is nice we're gonna let this use this to cook so i'm checking our rice right now and it's ready for boiled so i'll be sieving it out right about now Okay. Ah, gas is way expensive this period in the market. So let me just turn that down. No space to waste anything. How are you guys even coping with this whole inflation and everything just happening right about now? I know it's really not easy having an extra having extra mouths to feed the expenses, the cost, but please, in the spirit of Christmas, just try not to think so much about the expenses and just Focus on having a good time with family and friends because if we all start to check ah uh, back and forth, calculate, see, um, we won't really have a good Christmas, trust me. We won't be having something worth celebrating. But hopefully, we hope things get better sooner than later. All right, I'll be giving this one a good quick cold wash so that it just stops cooking while I go prep my sauce for the jello fries. I don't know, food is just a very funny thing. So right over here, just quickly give it a cold wash so that you stop every other cooking process while you go prep your sauce for your jello fries, okay? So I told you guys earlier that the success of your jello fries already starts from when you're prepping your meat stock. That wasn't a joke. So you see how that plays a huge part or a huge role in your jello fries making. Okay, so our pot is all good. I'm going to be preheating our pan right about now. Our chicken is still cooking nicely, but let me check on it. Let me quickly check on our chicken while our pan is being preheated. Okay, I still need to taste this chicken. 
I need to do the one track. We're absolutely on track. 100% on track. So while this is steaming, I'm going to be giving you guys a secret, right? When you're making jello fries or any food at all, and you know when, okay, for example, you live in a very populated neighborhood, right? Your neighbors, when they are cooking, you can perceive the aroma from your house. And sometimes you're cooking and you're wondering why people can't perceive the aroma from your house. It lies in the technique. And I learned this some years ago from my favorite aunt who owns a restaurant of her own. When you want to put, when you want to start frying or making your sauce, once you put your oil, don't go in immediately with your onion. Trust me, this is very controversial, but I have a reason for that. Go in with your set of spices first. It brings out that flavor, like the hot oil with your set of spices. It's a magical combination. Like someone far can perceive what is going on in your house. So if you want neighbors to say something is happening in your house, once you put your oil on fire, okay, my pan is really very hot. I'm going in with my vegetable oil right about now. Please, when you're making jello fries, be generous with the oil. Very generous. There's something it does with the rice. I don't know how to explain this enough, but be generous with your oil. So once you go in with your vegetable oil, like I said, if you want people far and white to know that something is happening in your house, go in with your blend of spice first before your onion. But if you don't want, you're not really concerned, if you just want it to be you and your household, let people not know what's going on in your house. Just put your onion first. Once it becomes brown, once your onion caramelizes, then you can go in with your spices. Why are you going to let your onions caramelize so that it can release its flavor into the oil? So once you've done that part, you go in with your spices and any other thing you want to be using to make your meal. That's yummy. Okay, so right about now, our oil is very hot. Like I told you, go in with your blend of spices. See, trust me, if you're in this kitchen right now, you can already perceive the holiday, the holiday feeling. You can already perceive it. You know, the Christmas smells. I saw someone that Christmas smells. And I'm like, are you okay? Christmas smells actually. So this part of this cooking, this food, a part of things that you perceive in your neighborhood, you know, that Christmas is around the corner. I'm telling you, Christmas smells. So once you put that part in there, going with your onions. You see that sound? I love it. That means my oil is at the perfect temperature I want it to be at. So once I hear that sound, I know I'm doing a very nice job. But trust me, one thing you won't want to overdo is the heat. When you're making jello fries, hmm? please make sure you cook on low heat. I've gotten that sound I want. But please make sure that you cook on low heat because you don't want your rice being half done yet it's already burning. Most times people tell you, I don't know anytime I cook jello fries. Before I know, it's already burning. Low heat is the secret. Low heat is the secret. Let me explain something to you. Once you leave it on high heat, it, everything now, it burns quickly, it burns faster. But you're not giving your rice enough time to done. But with low heat, low heat gives it it's slower. It gives it more time for the rice to cook. Everything comes together under low heat. So I've already put in my tin tomatoes. What I'm going to be doing right now is to keep stirring it, keep stirring it. This is the point where you don't want to, you did not the time for it to go and gossip here. Oh, did you see what she's wearing? Oh, did you see this one last year, the same thing? No, this is not the time for that. Focus on what you're doing because the moment you take a step out, your food is going to burn. So this stewing part is where you have to be extremely careful and pay full attention. Your hand doesn't leave this. Even if it leaves, your attention is still on it, okay? So you can just quickly keep giving it a good stir so it doesn't burn while we are at it. Oh my god, this already smells so nice. I love the aroma already it's given. So let me quickly check on our chicken as well. I think at this point, I'm just going to let this chicken cook for a bit, five more minutes and it's done. It's done. But in case you're going to be frying your chicken, please at this point, take it down. It's okay. It's really okay. Because you're still going to be frying it in deep hot oil. So I'm still stirring. Like I told you guys, this is a part where you don't want to leave for a few seconds because the moment you just turn, turn, <laughs> your food is already burnt. So you keep giving it a nice stir. While, meanwhile, you're also prepping too. I want the tomato, you know, because I'm using tin tomatoes, trust me, the best range of seasonings to use when you're making your jello fries, it comes from a very good place, is use freshly made. I don't, I'm, I don't have, I'm using tin tomato, I don't have anything against tin tomato, trust me. But I love making my own pepper mix myself. So that's why I told you that the secret of a good jello fries lies in the pepper mix, the combo, okay? So the range of bell peppers to use, the atarado, the tatashe, that's the scotch bonnet, the tatashe, you know the range to use. So that makes your, it gives your um, um, jello fries a different flavor compared to 
thin tomato. Not that thin tomato is wrong. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I love to make my own pepper mix myself. I get something about it when I do it myself. But of course, I'm using a thin tomato and it's not bad. And when you're cooking for a very large quantity, you're trying to save cost, thin tomato is also a better option. I don't know how much pepper or tomatoes cost in your area, but trust me, it's quite a lot this period. So if you're trying to save down cost, I can understand you going for thin tomatoes, okay? So we'll be turning our chicken stock in here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chicken, for your sacrifice. Duly noted. So we're turning our chicken stock in here. Mm. So I told you guys earlier about the secret ingredients, and you guys shouldn't go anywhere, right? So right now, now I'm whipping out my secret ingredients. A coconut milk. I'll be adding it to this sauce, a generous content. Adding to my sauce. Yes, that's the secret ingredient. Ever since I started adding coconut milk to my jello fries, trust me, there's something it does to the taste. There's something it just does to the whole general output of that jello fries. It makes it creamier, makes it tastier. I don't know if you've not tried it, I don't know what you're waiting for. Heaven. Heaven, guys, literally heaven. So I'll be adding more water that I feel like is going to be enough for my rice to use and cook. And adding more spices, seasoning cube, because I feel like because I added water, I still need to go in with some. Um, I added coconut milk and water, so I need to go in with my spice to sharpen the taste. I need to keep the taste sharpened. So this is going to do. So guys, our uh, stock has come to a boil, as you can see from the aroma or the smoke rising up. So gently going with your rice, your washed rice, going with it gently, gently, gently. So just going with it, make sure that you get everything into your pot nice and easy nice and easy easy peasy nice and easy okay so i've done that part come back give it a good stir make sure everything gets to the sauce give it a quite good stir please use a wooden ladder don't use metal on your non-stick pan so that you don't scar them and also your food doesn't go ahead to cook ahead of time. Use a wooden ladle, please, when you're making your jello fries. So just let it sit pretty over there. And cover. If you have a foil paper, use do well to use a foil paper to cover the top. So as it's cooking from underneath, it's cooking on top. Then don't forget, guys, this is the tricky part. Don't be in a hurry and you're already clapping for victory. Our food is going to be cooking. When we get back from this short break, we're going to be going right to taste this amazing meal we've cooked with so much love and care, okay? So go nowhere. When I come back from this short break, I'll be tasting this meal for you guys and letting you know how it tastes. So if it's an okay recipe for you to try in the kitchen for your loved ones and for yourself during this festive period. Go nowhere, guys. Be right back. people and now to the moment of truth i'll be tasting this meal and i'll be giving you my honest review i'll be very honest when i said honest review i wouldn't be partial because i'm the one who made it but i'm going to be giving you my honest review about this meal and trust me there are people in the background looking at me right now that already tried this meal and they're already going crazy for it so when i taste it and i tell you best believe come along with me guys okay so of course it's festive season and of course somewhere somehow there has to be a chilled bowl of salad in the fridge getting cool waiting for any meal you want to use it to eat so i had my salad in the fridge getting chilled as i was making my jello fries so it's already chilled a bit so i'm tasting the rice right about now and also i'm having a scoop of an amazing salad alongside with it mm. it's really really yummy
trust me this meal is giving what it's supposed to give it's amazing it's yummy it's sumptuous very very tasty okay something you should try for yourself your loved one and your family members in this yuletide season and with that i'll be leaving you at this point but before i go please don't forget to follow us on all of our social media handles showing right about now on the screen i remain your favorite host b bye guys and have an amazing amazing holiday season with your loved ones bye guys